So this is where we have the power to mess with our pattern a little bit. So I'm going to go, there's a couple of options you have for tile type. You could do a brick, you could do brick by column, but I think I'm going to go with just a regular grid on this one. And we're also going to be able to adjust the width and height, and this is trial and error just to find the right pattern shape for what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to kind of do trial and error. So that's too tight. So now I'm going to expand the width to instead of 0.5, maybe a 0.8. And then I'm going to trial, uh, trial and error the height. So let's do 1.8, make it smaller. And I like that so far. Um, so we can do the width, maybe tighten the width a little bit. Or we can make it, I liked it a looser a looser style. So that could be one option. So I'm going to go ahead and name this pattern option one because I think we want to maybe trial out some different ones. So I just did save copy. And so now it's going to be saved over to my swatches panel as a pattern. So there's a couple of my pattern options. And so let me, let me um, try some different spacing and see if I like a different type. So I'm just trialing an error. Five. Ooh, that's tight. Interesting. Let's go back to seven. And let's go back to two. Let's do some wider spacing. And let's do even wider spacing. So I think the pattern we had was good. I also kind of developed a couple other patterns very similar to this that I also have right over here in my swatch panel that I can play with. So let's go ahead and save a copy. We're going to do this option two. Just press enter, it'll save, or you can do save a copy and then title that a new pattern. So you can create 10 different pattern types with different spacings to kind of figure out the pattern you like. So now that we're done, we can kind of slide our pattern over here. And we can go ahead and remove our guides, smart guides, and also remove, um, I'm sorry, snap to grid. Go ahead and remove that because we don't want snap to grid for the rest of the document. That would just get in our way. And hide grid. So we're going to hide grid. So now we're going to start to apply the pattern to the chocolate bar. So I'm going to go ahead and do a full box here just to kind of see how it looks. And I'm going to select on a couple of my different patterns that I developed. You know, some are tighter, some are more loose. Kind of figure out the one that I think would work the best. So, so far, kind of like this tighter pattern I made. And if I ever wanted to adjust it, I just select my pattern, double click it, and then you can make some adjustments. And you can go ahead and select, just kind of get the select box. There's my original pattern right here. So you can actually take your direct selection tool and you can even edit this original pattern. And it'll, it'll edit all the rest of the patterns. So it's a very quick way to do patterns. I can shift that over. Anything you want. You can also change the color as well and the stroke um, width. So let's go ahead and cancel. So there's kind of our pattern so far. So now we got to think of the overall composition of the chocolate bar. I want to have this pattern, but I also need to have some crucial elements like the name of the bar and the percentage of chocolate that's in the bar as well. So I'm going to look back at my previous design here, and we're going to emulate this a little bit. So now I'm starting to think of the overall blocking and layout of the design. Um, so I want to have something similar to what I have with my South American bar. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and start kind of creating that same look and feel. And I'll kind of talk about what I was thinking about when I did the original one. Um, so I think chocolate bars really stand out when they have this nice, dark, deep black color. So I'm going to start out with kind of a, it's not necessarily black, it's got a little bit of gray. It's not just a stark black like this. It's got that nice charcoal gray, kind of has a nicer appeal to it. I'm going to do it a little bit darker. And then I also wanted to have kind of, and this is when you have to start doing some research and go to uh, maybe uh, kind of an organic market or somewhere that's going to have more artists and chocolate bars and kind of do some research. Um, so I have right here a mast bar that I grabbed and I wanted to kind of show you uh, kind of how packaging design works and kind of how I thought about this um, design that I did. And this is kind of um, what I used as my research. So this is the fun part because you get to kind of open up a chocolate bar and eat it. So that's always fun. Um, but anyway, so here's kind of the, the packaging. 
uh, the front and this is kind of the geometric pattern that mass does that I kind of liked and I really kind of ha like how this is kind of a sticker it's like a little adhesive kind of square it's not printed on the front itself it's just an extra sticker added on top and it kind of adds a nice layered feel and that's kind of what I wanted to do with mine is kind of have some kind of sticker adhesive on the top that felt like it was tactile that you could feel like there's a layer there it's not just one printed sheet of paper wrapped around the bar that there was um, some complexity to it um, same thing for the uh, the bottom um, you'll see kind of in this example where I kind of have the the dark cocoa and I'll go ahead and show you the Photoshop here I kind of wanted to have a little sticker that came around the side and wrapped around and maybe it had the barcode on the back and so this is when you really need to think about um, packaging design it's, it's 3d it, it, it's something that you can turn around and you can look at so for this chocolate bar um, I have to think about um, how it's wrapped so this is kind of your standard wrapper bar that folds in half and I was thinking of having the adhesive sticker go down but also it goes o over around and down here to seal the bar and then the other having a sticker that goes across and on the back because you have to think about the um, the contents the ingredients all these uh, the barcode will definitely need to be there you have to think about all those elements um, when you're doing the design it's not just the front that looks pretty but it's the entire package and wrapper so I'm going to go ahead and open this up right now so you can kind of see how the packaging design works I'm just open this up carefully that looks really good but you can kind of see this design mock-up so right now we're just kind of looking at the front kind of getting a good good idea of what we want the front to look like but how does that how do we design all the way around um, so we can set that up usually if a printer supplies a, uh, a chocolate the widow whoever's going to be printing the wrapper the printer they usually have a template for this but if you have to create your own um, you can ask for sizing guidelines and you can create that in your own in illustrator and so there's a couple ways we can do that we can do that by uh, do it going to document setup going to edit artboards and we can create a couple of different artboards to kind of show uh, the back or we can go ahead and get the final sizing so in this case that's the front of our chocolate bar um, and let's say it's double the width so you have everything that wraps around um, so the width instead of a 2.63 it would be for you know kind of double that um, so we're just going to do kind of a rough doubling and what we could do is we can go ahead and copy this and we're just going to make kind of some marks for us this is just for us personally so we know where the center is we know that's going to be the center of the bar and the left we'll go ahead and slide our text away and the right and the left side is going to be where it wraps around the back and then we're going to have to have a separate um, uh, put on a separate area this is of course when we do final print uh, print prep um, we're going to create um, a new artboard over here for the two adhesive stickers that would go on the chocolate bar. But for right now, we're just going to do a final design over all of this, and we can always separate those elements um, for the printer later. So let's get started with the layout. So I have all of my text right here that I know needs to be on the chocolate bar, so now I need to arrange this in a very appeasing, appealing way. Um, so let's go ahead and wrap our little black over the sides. I'm going to do our little adhesive sticker. Of course, this will be a separate element, but we're just doing this um, to show a mock-up to the client to show what a final design would look like. So I'd like to kind of feature kind of an image that kind of represents Africa, but kind of in a traditional artistic sense. So I would like to feature that somewhere in this area, and I'd like to have chocolate bar featured on the top. And the South America, or this would actually be African, African single origin on the bottom. And I'd love to go ahead and put um, my chocolate contents. Go ahead and click on this down here on the bottom. Go ahead and arrange and bring that to the front. Somewhere on the bottom and another adhesive sticker. Okay, so we want it kind of roughly there. Maybe about that sizing. Uh, I want chocolate bar to be the very first thing people see. So let me go ahead and select all my text elements and make sure they're on the top layer. I'm just going to arrange, bring to front. So now I'm just doing some basic blocking. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
we're just kind of getting an idea of layout where our text and type should go. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. So now I need to start to think about font choices. So I'm going to do kind of a mixture. I like to mix up sans, serif, and serif fonts together because I think they pair nice, nice together. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, kind of look through my fonts and kind of figure out some good fonts to use. 